we have a wild card question generally every show. This is a question that you guys have sent through that is off topic. Okay, so we are done with our number patterns. This is an algebraic expressions question. Clearly some of you are struggling with it. So let's take a look at it. It says solve for x and y. Okay, obviously these are simultaneous equations. Guys, very important. The moment you see a squared, it means that there are going to be two answers. Just like if that was a cubed, it would be three answers. So my inclination is to get the first equation in terms of x, because then I can substitute in. So if I rewrite this equation in terms of x, I'm going to get x is equal to negative 1 plus 2y, if I add 2y to both sides. Okay. So now, if I look over here, every time I see an x in the second equation, I substitute this whole expression in there. Okay, so I'm going to get that over here. Negative 1 plus 2y all squared minus 7 minus y squared is equal to negative y. Okay, so now guys, when you're solving for an equation, try to get it into standard form is equal to 0. So let's take a look. Let's expand this bracket. The square of negative 1 is 1. Then you twice the product of the two inner. Remember, you say square the first, square the last, and then twice the product of these two. So the product of those two is negative 2y. If I double that, I get negative 4y. Okay. Then I square the last term, I get 4y squared. Then I carry on, negative 7 minus y squared, squared, and if I add y to both sides, I make it equal to zero. Okay, so simple, easy peasy. Now, if I simplify it like terms, the y squareds over there, the y's are over here, and the constant terms are just the numbers. Okay, so if I look at y squared first, 4y squared minus y squared is going to give me 3y squared. Negative 4y plus y is negative 3y. And 1 minus 7 is negative 6, equal to 0. Okay. So, if you guys don't want to factorize this trinomial, you can divide the whole thing by 3. And because of this 0 on the other side, that 3 becomes non-existent. So, y squared minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. So now we can easily factorize this. y minus 2 into y minus 1 equals 0. Okay. Now, by the product 0 theorem, y minus 2 is equal to 0, or y minus 1 is equal to 0, and therefore y equals 2, or y equals 1. Okay, so those are our y answers. But guys, remember, solve simultaneously for x and y. So remember, right at the beginning, we found this expression for x. x is equal to negative 1 plus 2y. So now that we found our y values, we can substitute them in. So x is equal to negative 1 plus 2 multiplied by 2. Substitute the y in. And so we get negative 1 plus 4, which is equal to 3. Or x is equal to negative 1 plus 2 times 1, which is equal to negative 1 plus 2, which is equal to 1. Okay. Make sure you understand this, guys. Whenever you get this kind of expression, you need to have two x values and two y values. Also, make sure that you write them in their corresponding order. If you find that this is y1, you need to write the corresponding x value underneath it. And this would be x2 and y2. Okay, make sure you write them correspondingly. Okay, so guys, when you get your simultaneous equations, tips and tricks, either you can get them both in terms of the same variable and make them equal to each other. If I say x is equal to that load of rubbish and x is equal to that other load of rubbish, because they're both x 
I can make them equal to each other, okay? Or if you get simultaneous equations like this and one is easily represented in terms of one variable, write it in terms of that one variable. That's what I did here. I made the first equation and x equals 2, okay? Then in the second equation, whenever you see that variable, substitute what you found into that variable and then simplify and solve for x, okay? Second thing, if you get a quadratic, make sure you factorize it and then make it equal to zero, okay? Because that means that either one of those brackets is equal to zero. That is an easy, easy, easy peasy way to solve for a quadratic equation, okay, guys? So algebraic expressions will always be question one in your exam. Make sure you understand what they're asking. Make sure you know how to solve, know how to use the quadratic formula, very important. And also just understand what they are asking you. If they say solve for X and Y, solve for both of the variables. It's not enough to solve for just one, okay.